Welcome back. So in this uh, video lecture, we'll talk about the detailed structure of enter. Okay, we will go the internal structure of enter. Now, if you want to see the internal structure of enter, we have to do TS section. All right, transverse section. We have to cut this way. Okay, this is enter. If you want to see the internal structure, we have to cut this way, not that way. Okay, this way. So this cut is known as TS right transverse section so now we will see the detailed structure of enter ts of enter okay so when we cut enter we find structure like this okay we find a structure like like this so we find let me make it straight we find two lobe this is one lobe this is another lobe okay so at between there is a tissue which connects with filament this tissue are called as sterile connective tissue now i am not drawing filament here okay no need to draw filament we will just see the structure of enter so when we cut and observe under microscope we find a structure like this this is one lobe this is another lobe and between of it there is a tissue known as sterile connective tissue sterile means they do not take part in reproduction process connective it connects right connects with filament tissue right so inside we find small lobe structure inside of it we find small lobe structure okay inside of it we find small lobe structure those one such structure are called as one such structure are called as microsporin gium okay microsporin gm so how many microsporin gm we find we find four microsporin gm one two three and four okay next can you see those depression at the middle of the lobe those depression hmm? those depression are known as point of dehiscence point of dehiscence okay we will see the role of point of dehiscence later when we discuss the process of microsporogenesis okay for now just write it down the name so this depression are known as point of dehiscence so next so what we find we find four small lobe structure known as microsporangium and we can see the tissue sterile connective tissue and the point of dehiscence now we will discuss one by one the layers that is present inside the anther okay we need to know the name of the layers along with their function okay so next let me show you the layers that is present inside the enter and we need to discuss one by one okay so the structure that is present in between microsporangium and the enter are known as the structure that is present between the microsporin oh, sorry between the enter and the microsporangium are called as enter 
wal Okay, enter wall. The structure that is present between microsporangium and enter is known as enter wall. So there is a first tissue that is present inside the enter, and those tissues are single layer flat cells. They are made up of single layer flat cell. These are the first tissue that we find inside the enter okay i will show you only this part when you draw make all those okay you cover all those i will show you only this part okay but you cover it all okay so the first tissue that we find inside the enter those tissue are a single layer flat cell known as epithelial cell epithelial cell okay what is epithelial cell these are the you write by yourself okay what is epithelial cell these are the single layer of flat cell that is present on the surface of the entire wall okay these are the first tissue that we find single layer of flat cell flat okay flat cell which is present on the surface of enter wall okay this is epithelial cell so next to epithelial cell we find another tissue next to epithelial cell there is another tissue which is elongated shape and made up of single layer elongated okay not round make it elongated the elongated cell of single layer those tissue are called as this is number two known as endothelium okay so next to epithelial cell we have another tissue known as endothelium they are elongated shape and arranged in a single layer so endothelium and one important features are there in endothelium they have callous thickening they have callous thickening what is callous callous are jelly like substances that is present okay in this layer there is a jelly like substances present okay those jelly like substances are known as callos and this callos this callos have to degenerate later when the enter become mature the callos they degenerate okay we will see on later in the process of microsporogenesis so next to microsporogenesis we have another cell made up of two to three layer of cell those cell are known as parenchyma cell i'll show you only one part of it where it is present all over the enter okay i will show you the only one part of it so next to endothelium we have two to three layer of cell known as parenchyma cell and this is the middle this is the middle middle layer okay it's present in the middle layer it is it is present in the middle layer let me write this they are known as number three parenchyma parenchyma cell so epithelial cell endothelium and parenchyma cell so parenchyma cell are made up of two to three layer of cell okay that's it and it is present in the middle layer of the enter wall okay now next to endothelium we have a parenchyma cell made up of two to three layer of cell which is present at the middle layer of enter wall so that's it okay 
Now next we have another cells which is pyramid in shape and is present inside the layer of microsporangium. Okay, the shape or pyramid shape and it is present inside the layer of microsporangium. Those cells are known as those cells are known as number four tepetum very very important tepetum you need to know the function of tepetum okay this is the last last uh, cell that is present inside the enter well so first is epithelial cell next to epithelial cell we have endotheliosome then parenchyma cell then tepetum i will write is important function okay tepetum okay tepetum are present on the surface of microsporangium and they have thick cytoplasm they have thick cytoplasm and those cell are nutritive in nature okay those tepetum cells are nutritive in nature they are nutritive cells they are nutritive cell because they provide nutrition to the developing embryo okay when the embryo are formed they provide nutrition to those embryo that's why they are they have nutritive cell so they produce nutrition to developing embryo so next function they provide nutrition to developing embryo okay we are writing the definition and function of tepetum so next i will write that side so continuing so first is they have a thick cytoplasm and the cells are nutritive in nature and they provide nutrition to the developing embryo okay next uh, i'm writing that side you continue your notes um, next we can write um, they also helps in production of pollen kit pollen kit what is pollen kit you might have seen in uh, china rose flower in the male reproductive structure that is in the anther there's a yellowish powdery substances present yellowish powdery substances small tiny tiny yellowish powdery substances yes those substances are produced by a cell called astepetum okay it is responsible for production of pollen kit those yellow powdery substances are known as pollen kit all right now one very important function they produce pubis body call as sporo pollenin sporo pollenin they are also responsible for the production of sporopollenin what is sporopollenin Sporo sporopollenin is a substance which is resistance okay highly resistant in the living world highly resistant substance in a living world okay one very important function of sporopollenin is they are highly resistant substance in living world they are unbreakable to any environmental extreme environmental condition or it cannot be breakable by any external agent they are very highly resistant remember one very important function of sporopollenin they are very resistant substance in the living world they are extremely resistant substance 
this is resistance to any extreme environmental condition or it cannot be breakable by any certain external agent okay so which help in the production of sporopollenin which tissue that is tapetum or it can be called as tapetal cells also okay tapetum okay important function so one again let me write here another very important function of tapetum okay one more about sporopollenin okay one important thing is they are highly resistant substance in the living world the another function of sporopollenin the another function of sporopollenin sporopollenin okay i'm writing about sporopollenin they help in they help in making of exine the helps in the making of exine now exine what is exine exine are outer layers that is present in pollen grains okay we will see next part of it we will see next exine are the outer layer which makes pollen grain okay what is pollen grain they are the male reproductive structure they are a male gametophyte in case of plant they are male gametophyte in case of plant okay pollen grains so we will see next so here we are discussing the tissue the, the layers that is present inside the anther okay so sporopollenin also help in the uh, making of exine hmm? and it is produced by tapetum so one another one important function of tapetum the secret the secret an enzyme called calus calus which help this are this is the enzyme which help in where is that which help in which help in degeneration of callus okay callus is an enzyme which help in degeneration of callus okay so these are the layers that is present inside the anther okay the first layers the first cell is made up of epithelial cell which is present on the surface of the anther wall next to epithelial cell we have endothelium endothelium single layer cell elongated in shape and they have callus thickening callus thickening is ruptured by callus later okay later we will discuss in next step a uh, next topic so next to endothelium we have parenchyma cell which is present at the middle layer of the anther wall and it is made up of two to three uh, layer cell and next to parenchyma cell we have tapetum which is present on the surface of microsporangium okay this round round structure we call it as a microsporangium it has a very important function it have it what it do tapetum tapetum produce nutrition to developing embryos because the cell are nutritive in nature all right and they also help in the production of pollen kit so we have known what is pollen kit next they produce sporopollenin which is highly resistant substance in the living world remember please sporopollenin okay and sporopollenin what they do they help in the making of exine of pollen grains okay and tapetum also secret enzyme called calus so remember the remembering part is tapetum very important you are not allowed to forget tapetum okay so these are the structure of anther if question asks draw the structure of anther then so this a ts of you can draw this diagram so make it nice in your copy okay and note it down all those so next uh, we will discuss the process of microsporogenesis that is the process of formation of male gamete and that male gamete in case of plant are called as pollen grains all right okay these are the layers that is present inside the anther wall
for that I need to show you diagram one more time so these are the structure that is there inside the anther that is point of dehiscence so next topic next topic is microsporogenesis I hope you all understood the layers that is present inside the anther microsporogenesis so next topic is microsporogenesis okay so these are the structure that is there inside the anther when we cut enter in a transverse section and observe under the microscope we find a structure like this they have four cells inside of it and the function and structure we have seen okay so next is microsporogenesis next next topic so for that i need to show you the diagram okay and i want you to draw the diagram again so what did that structure call that one micro sporen sporen gm the singular word is known as gm microsporangium the plural we call as microsporangia all right okay these are the layers that is there inside okay so first tell me what is genesis here the word tells is meaning what is genesis genesis means formation formation of what micro spore micro means tiny small what tiny small what spores okay so formation of microspore the process of formation of microspores are called as microsporogenesis the process of formation of microspore are called as microsporogenesis okay so in this process we will discuss the process of formation of microspores that is male gametes known as pollen grains which is produced by plant body okay so male gamete that is produced by plant body is known as pollen grains so we will see the process of formation of pollen grains or microspores okay so these are the structure that is there okay inside the anther now when the anther is young okay when the anther is young inside the microsporangium there is a tiny tiny cells present okay inside the, let me rub out all those tissue so that it don't look complex let me rub all those this is microsporin okay okay so imagine the cells and layers are there okay in this uh, topic we are seeing the process of formation of microspore that is pollen grains male gametes so when the anther is young listen carefully when the anther is young inside the microsporangium there is a small tiny cell present which are compactly packed with each other small tiny cells present which is compactly packed with each other okay so when the anther is young there's a small small tiny cells present inside the microsporangium which is compactly packed now when i draw this that means in all those microsporangium is the same thing present okay i will show you in only one part of it if i draw all those it will take time but for you i want you to draw in all microsporangium so when the anther is young there is a small tiny cells compactly packed with each other present inside the microsporangium those cells are called as archesporial cells or there is another name which is also called as sporogenous cell okay all right now when the anther is young there's a small tiny cells present inside the microsporangium which are compactly packed with each other okay 
Now when enter become mature, okay, when enter grows to its size and become mature, the microsporangium cells also develops in size. They become big, okay, they grows to its size. The microsporangium grows to its size. They become big than normal microsporangium. Okay, when they enter become mature, the cells of microsporangium, the microsporangium cell grows to its size and become big. So I am showing in one particular diagram only, but this thing happen. Okay, after days, after a week. Okay. But I will show you in that particular diagram only. So next what happened? It does not take place at the same time. Okay. All those changes happen to four microsporangia. Okay. But I will show you directly in this diagram only. Try to understand. So when enter become mature, the microsporangium also develops and grows to its size. Now size become big as compared to the microsporangium which was there during the early stage okay when the enter was young and when the enter become mature the size of microsporangium becomes big as well as the size of archaeosporangial cell grows to its size the archaeosporial cells become big and they separate from each other okay so next all those process we will discuss in the next video.